On September 27, 2018, both Senator Tim Kaine and Congressman Don Beyer joined Congressman Joe Kennedy for an annual Virginia 8th Congressional District Democratic Party fundraiser in honor of Bobby Kennedy and the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. They addressed their fellow Democrat voters to raise funds for an election in which Congressman Beyer, the Falls Church Dues Press Champion for Progressive Causes and Child of the Enlightenment, who won over 76% of the vote in the midterms and raised over $2 million to defeat a 25-year-old Republican who had only a GoFundMe campaign account and they clothed their works in Congress as the continuing legacy of Reverend King, a man who chose never to seek a political office nor to acquire political power because his aim was only justice, that it might flow like rivers and righteousness like a mighty stream. On April 3rd, 1968, Reverend King addressed an assembly of for his last time to urge them to assist in the fight for the equality of sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, and he said, and you know what's beautiful to me to see is all of these ministers of the gospel. It's a marvelous picture. Who is it that is supposed to articulate the longings and aspirations of the people more than the preacher? Somehow the preacher must have a kind of fire shut up in his bones. And whenever injustice is around, he tell it. Somehow the preacher must be an Amos and saith, When God speaks, when God speaks, who can but prophesy? Again with Amos, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Somehow, somehow the preacher must say with Jesus, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me and he's anointed me to deal with the problems of the poor. On August 28, 1963, he stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and said, in a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But it is obvious today that Americans have defaulted on this promissory note insofar as our citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. A check that has come back marked insufficient funds. On April 16, 1963, from a Birmingham jail, he wrote these words. You express a great deal of anxiety over our willingness to break laws. This is certainly a legitimate concern since we so diligently urge people to obey the Supreme Court's decision of 1954 outlawing segregation in the public schools. It is rather strange and paradoxical to find us consciously breaking laws. One may well ask how can you advocate breaking some laws and obeying others? The answer is found in the fact that there are two types of laws. There are just laws and there are unjust laws. I would agree with St. Augustine that an unjust law is no law at all. Yet despite his privileged education today, I doubt that those words of St. Augustine, a Roman Catholic saint quoted by a Baptist and Protestant Reverend King were comprehended by a certain Catholic named Don Beyer because today I stand in court to face off against his attorneys in a hearing in which the judge, an African American, who went out and grabbed a burger to celebrate the enactment of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, but who stood silent when the Federal District Court in Alexandria on January 15, 2019, 
repealed one of its most important provisions that had permitted persons of color to integrate schools and lunch counters. As Congressman Byer and Senator Kane made their political speeches in the current age where Virginia Democrats who ignored the presence of the headquarters of the American Nazi Party in their midst in Arlington for over 20 years and now advancing the mission of Margaret Sanger upon founding of Planned Parenthood to offer the choice of infanticide to the 75% of women seeking an abortion who are impoverished, subsisting on wages below the poverty line, you have to wonder if they ever reflected on the words of the minister whose robes they donned for political purposes. It is a judge who decided to deprive me just days later of my basic constitutional trial rights without even affording me the procedural due process that was due and today permits Don Byer to dismiss my complaint in a proceeding in which I am denied the right to present any written pleading and where he and Don Byer's attorney will determine the fate of my complaint in a courthouse without my opportunity to argue my case. But like Reverend King, I refuse to believe that the Bank of Justice is bankrupt. I refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So I've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. So we're going into court to fight this illegal unconstitutional order. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia, or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal orders. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic constitutional rights because they hadn't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read, somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of the press. Somewhere I read that democracy dies in darkness and somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any illegal orders turn us around, we're going on. We're going on. We're going on. But as Reverend King said in a call to live a life of dangerous selflessness in a profession of relevant ministry where churches were not just irrelevant social clubs who is it that is supposed to articulate the longings and aspirations of the people more than the preacher but where are the preachers somehow the preacher must have a kind of fire shut up in his bones but where are those preachers and whenever injustice is around he has to tell it Somehow the preacher must be in Amos and say it. When God speaks, when God speaks, who can but prophesy? Again with Amos, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Somehow the preacher must summon the strength to say with Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. And he has anointed me to deal with the problems of the poor. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well, 
and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me, God. Not unmindful of the future is the motto of Washington and Lee University. My name is Major Mike Webb, and I am running for U.S. Congress in liberty, with honor and excellence, the South shall rise again. Honest. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.